the Mental Health Care Act states that the duration of seclusion and restraint for psychiatric patients should be less than four hours. At Tower Hospital, patients allegedly spent days locked up. One patient even set himself alight, as Healthy News reports. The people will scream in terror, words etched into the grimy walls of a seclusion room in Ward 6B at Tower Psychiatric Hospital in Fort Beaufort, a small town in the Eastern Cape. Written on these walls, it's like a patient had taken a pen or a sharp object and scratched this kind of haunting rhetoric, you know, into the walls. It's a story Grahamstown-based community journalist Catherine Cleary has been following for months. A sane person would go insane being in that space. These single cells don't have bathroom facilities, so there's no toilet. There is a cement slab on which is placed a mattress, and they placed far away from the nurses, so there isn't monitoring. Um, and, and patients are there, some patients sleep there on a daily basis. If these walls could talk, they may tell a tale of patients locked up alone for days. The Mental Health Care Act permits four hour lockups under medical supervision. Seclusion cannot be used for extensive periods of time. It's not supposed to be used for punishment. We have a policy, a national policy in this country on how seclusion should be used. But most of them spend days here in violation of patient rights, says Dr. Sukeri. We weren't even using what was called, which is, which is required by law. You have to fill in a form called uh, Mental Health Care Act Form 48. And, and, and that, that is required by, so that, by the Mental Health Care Act that that form is completed and a register is kept and it is submitted to the Mental Health Review Board because you, they need to be, they, they are the watchdog. It was in one of these single cells that a patient set himself alight in February. We spoke to his aunt who asked not to be identified. He wrapped himself around with a blanket and lit and sustained burns from just below the the buttocks down to the toes, both legs. Where he was, they never told me. He lived in the single cell. And he was called a uh, um, habitual self-harmer. Now for me, as a psychiatrist, I'm thinking that that's so wrong to label somebody um, and, and you have to think about what you're actually doing here. This patient needs care. And, and this is the cornerstone of the Mental Health Care Act. A report by the Society of Psychiatrists highlights inhumane and high-risk conditions in the seclusion rooms. Eastern Cape Chair Professor Zugiswa Zingela was part of a task team. The conditions of the seclusion rooms were a major concern. A Tower Hospital employee told us the rooms were used regularly and at the CEO's discretion. Maybe you said that I got straight. The patients are not being treated as human beings. It's been years seclusion has been happening in that institution. The burnt patient's aunt says her nephew's wounds turned septic because they weren't taken care of. I nearly cried because I thought of the mother and that he's not safe. In fact, I said to myself, this time is gonna die. She says her nephew cheated death several times while at Tower Hospital. Once he nearly bled to death after trying to castrate himself. After the incision of both testers with a blade. But how, how did he get a blade? To, <laughs> he said on the windowsill, there was a bleed. He also broke a leg attempting to scale a wall and he's been injured in fights. Our main problem with is this that he is dangerous to himself and to other patients, to other people. That's the reason why he was admitted. 
Eastern Cape Health's Siswe Kupelo says some patients choose to use the seclusion rooms. A white patient who simply doesn't want to mix with black patients and he's using that voluntarily. If you choose to have privacy, it should not necessarily be provided in the single cell. They can be a danger to themselves. You don't put a bed there, you don't have a toilet. Tower Hospital is having the surveillance cameras. If one can go to the footages and, and, and study through what is happening, that will be an evidence enough. Would it not have been an idea to release some footage from that, those CCTV cameras? I don't know. I didn't do the investigation. I don't know what they've done. You see? I don't know. Because if I was the CEO and there were complaints about the use of the seclusion rooms, I would have released the footage and said, look, no one uses it. Let's, 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 let's wait for the report. I don't know what they've done. I don't know whether they've studied the, the CCTV footage or not. We put in a request to see the footage, but we're still waiting. Last week, the seclusion rooms were torn down on the instruction of the Eastern Cape Health Department. Next week, we'll bring you more harrowing tales of abuse from Eastern Cape mental health institutions. They beaten him up until he wetened himself. And ask if there's been a cover-up at Tower Hospital. That's all from us this week. Please do give us your feedback. Our Twitter handle is at checkpoint underscore ENCA and our email address checkpoint at ENCA.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Ngepile Mabuse.